We want to go to out to St. John's County where they are holding a press conference right now about the latest in the area concerning Dorian. Let's listen in live. At this time, I'd like to introduce our county administrator, Mr. Michael Wanchek. Thank you, Linda. Good afternoon, everyone. As the hurricane approaches, our weather is beginning to deteriorate. Uh, we're fortunate in that the weather conditions that were forecasted 24 hours ago aren't as severe as they were worse, uh, originally thought to be. So we take great comfort in that. On the other hand, it's important to remember we are still under a hurricane warning for all of St. Johns County. This is not the time to get casual or lower our guard as we move forward. As we've mentioned previously, we're most concerned about the low-lying areas and the coastal areas within the community. That remains in effect. The evacuation zones A and B from Hastings to the Matanzas Inlet, as well as Flagler States, Hastings, and low, other low-lying areas. We're very concerned about those areas. This storm is shaping up, as I said yesterday, to be a combination of Hurricanes Irma and Matthew. There are a few special considerations I want to review with the community very quickly as we go into this storm event. First, the evacuation order that was issued several days ago remains in effect and will remain in effect throughout the duration of this storm. There are six hurricane shelters open for special need populations and pet friendly populations and, and they are online and they've been previously announced and press releases have been put out. Perhaps most importantly, and I'll have Sheriff Shore address this in a moment, but there has been a curfew ordered for this evening starting at 8 p.m. And I'll let the Sheriff explain what that means to the community in a moment. Both bridges and water, uh, the bridges will be uh, open in both directions until it's unsafe to cross. Water will remain on until it's unsafe to keep utility personnel on the islands. We're optimistic or hopeful that they will not have to be shut down or closed, but it remains to be seen. You're just going to have to monitor conditions on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. As I mentioned yesterday, our coastal environments are extremely dangerous. If you're following these storms on, on TV, you're seeing just how active the coastal areas are. We're asking residents and visitors to stay away from the beaches and certainly not to go into the water. Even after the storm passes, there will be very treacherous rib cry, tides and other currents in place. Finally, with respect to local government, county government, city government, and the school board, public schools, are all closed Thursday, and that includes the constitutional officers. So we are completely closed except for essential personnel who are responding to the storm. And with those comments, I'll introduce Sheriff Shore, who will go over a couple of key public safety items. Thank you, Mr. Wanchek. Good afternoon, citizens. Uh, just a few brief, uh, brief comments. It's, it's important for the community to know that <clears throat> city government, county government, our school system, our school board, all of our not-for-profit partners, all of our partners in the healthcare fields, et cetera, we are fully engaged and 100% operational. We're prepared for the worst-case scenario because it's easier to power down and it is to power up when you're having one of these incidences. So uh, what the storm's going to do, everyone's trying to intuit that. Uh, Mother Nature's fickle. That's one thing we know for sure. A uh, couple of things. The curfew. And again, as Mr. Wanchik said, there's going to be ingress and egress off of those beaches uh, until it, it, the judgment is made that it's too, too dangerous to traverse the bridges. Uh, curfew has been signed by Mr. Wanchik and our Board of County Commissioners. Tonight from 8 p.m. until 6 a.m., there'll be a curfew in the areas that have been identified, and that information is available through the websites and other ways. But let me just say this about the curfew. We in our profession have been given a very important tool, and that tool is called discretion. And what I mean by that is if somebody is out there or has to be out there doing something that we are convinced is in their best interests or in the best interests of the community, we may not enforce the ordinance. If we feel otherwise, we may enforce the ordinance. So what I'm telling you is this, that curfew is there to keep people 
home and or off the streets, okay? We're gonna use common sense with it because we know not all situations are the same. Finally, now's the time for our citizens to ramp up their situational awareness, right? Don't drive through standing water because you don't know how deep it is and you don't know if there's been a run out under the water. Simple things, okay? We're out there, we're gonna be there. If any of our citizens get in trouble, we're gonna to come to your aid. And I know I speak for our great friends and partners in fire rescue, law enforcement, and everybody else uh, that, that might be needed. So without further ado, Mr. Wanchek, I'll turn the podium back over to you. Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Paul Waldron, Chairman of the Board of County Commissioners. First of all, I want to thank everybody for their patience. The evacuation, those who have evacuated, has gone really well. We haven't had any issues that I'm aware of. We expect your patience to get ready for the storm. We're expecting it starting in the, at night, about 4 a.m., for it to really get rougher and as it progresses through the day tomorrow. So please, if you're home, stay home. If you're going to evacuate, now's the time to do it. Also, if you have any questions or concerns, our staff will be here all night to answer your questions. The number to call is 904-824-5550, which again is calling again. So we're <laughs> right on time as yesterday. So, And if you'd like to go to our website, it's www.sjcfl.us. You know, be patient, like the sheriff said, when you're on the road, the, the officers there are there to help you, fire rescue is there to help you. Just tell them your concerns and they will help you the best as possible and get you where you need to be. The best thing to do is take care of yourself and your family and worry about your property later. Your safety is the number one priority for St. John's County. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Wanchuk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This being the last opportunity to talk to the community before the storm arrives, we just want to encourage everybody to find a place, safe place to stay, hunker down, pay attention because circumstances can and often do change unexpectedly. Uh, please follow the guidance of the emergency operation officials, your first responders, law enforcement, as we've all said, they're here to help you. Uh, you've already been given the hotline number for non-emergency calls. If you're in an emergency situation, that is not the number to call. Use the normal 911 number for emergency situations as we proceed into the evening. So with that all having been said, we'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. Mr. Wanchak, Vic Michalucci, News for Jax. Are you worried about hurricane fatigue? We have seen people just sitting and watching this storm be basically stagnant that it seems like some have backed off with their preparations and their concerns. I am concerned about that, and I'm concerned about a little bit of um, media mixed message in that what happens in St. John's County is not necessarily what happens in Flagler or Clay or Duval. And you need to take your direction from your local county and the conditions that are playing out in that county. This is a long storm. It's played out for us. Many of us have been on alert now for almost a week and we're becoming fatigued, and we rot rotate through. We're trained professionals. It's even harder on the community. So that, that is a concern. We just, in these last few hours, ask people to just gut it out, and let's, let's get through the storm safely. Any other questions? Sheriff, about the beaches, uh, I know that you said that officers and deputies have discretion. We're seeing people still out there getting dangerously close to the surf. Are your men and women going to pull them out? If they wind up in trouble in the surf, of course. But, you know, and I, hit, I got on this yesterday. This is, there's a lot of personal responsibility involved in this. If we see somebody doing or performing reckless behavior, obviously we'll stop Vic. But, you know, we've got a lot of needs going, that are going to be occurring, and they are occurring. So people have to use common sense. And if we see something that we think is going to endanger their life or somebody else's, we're going to stop it. I mean, we, we and that's why we have discretion, discretion and flexibility. Uh, we don't want to stop somebody from doing something that they should be doing or that will benefit the community, like the media. I mean, you folks are going to probably be out a lot during the storm and, and moving around and what have you, and, and which is vitally important uh, for people to get eyes on on what's going on, and we appreciate what you guys do. Any other questions? If not, thanks for being here.